Lytle delivers another corner. This one stays in the air a long time. Uskroski, who got ahead to it, may have come off Fishlock. So another corner kick. Headed on by Killian. Just beyond Domi Richardson. Across on the corner kick. I like the service. Richardson just couldn't stretch out her leg. Footwork wasn't quite there for the central back for Sky Blue, but uh, so far, I and mean, we're only two minutes into the second half, but it seems a little bit more positive stuff, and the players have got themselves on the right page. Good work from Kayla Mills. Now a break here for Sky Blue. Kerr crossing from the right, headed out by Fishlock. Stanton settling. Wide here for Skrosky. Stanton. Out in front of Mills. Some space here on this right side. Five in the box. Four Mills. Here comes Skrosky. Rose well, but headed it wide. And it sneaks in. It's a goal for Sam Kerr. She had six goals in July. And a mini slump for Kerr. That's her first goal since that wild 5-4 win. July 23rd. She had the equalizer that made it 4-4 in the 75th minute before Rapino had the winner. And here we are at 3-1. And this stadium in particular has produced some wild games for Sky Blue, some late equalizers and winners. That's been the story at your sack field over the years for Sky Blue. Meanwhile, Yanez crossing to her opposite number, Dami Richardson. And the goal was created, by, and that drew the defender out towards the ball, allowing the pass down the flank. Nice touch into the space by Mills and a great delivery, putting Seattle Rain under pressure and they weren't able to deal with that, resulting in the shot from Kerr. Picked up by Rumi Utsugi. Her shot in the third minute came off Johnson for the opening Seattle goal. Yanez, Utsugi forward for Johnson. Dami Richardson heads it towards the corner. Sky Blue very good at home in the second half, scoring goals as Seattle keeps it in the offensive third. Johnson tried to slip it for Utsugi, falls to Nairn, but the offside flag has the season for Sky Blue. Rodriguez had a winner against Kansas City, 83rd minute at your sack field. Raquel Rodriguez beat the dash in the 85th minute here as they switch it wide here to Lytle. Lytle centering Kurt. Takes her touch, crossing. And a good claim from Kottmeyer. She also has to have some support there. Tiernan wasn't really in the picture to challenge Kottmeyer. Given away by Stanton. Yanez out to Naho. Naho has her head up. Well weighted pass laid off by Johnson. Wonderful build up from Seattle. Nairn looking for her third assist of the night. Johnson. Against Freeman. Pickett. Expected a run, never had it. As twice in April and May, and then Maya Hayes had a winner against Orlando. All those coming after the 80th minute here. You had the wild comeback, the hat trick from Kerr against Kansas City as you see another chance here. Madison Tiernan cutting it back. And her cross just a bit off as she tried to find Lytle. In and did all the hard work. And again, just the decision making from number 73 needs to be a little bit better in the attacking third. Let's get a little bit more composed. Find her teammates and then find a way to get on the return pass. You had the Kerr hat trick, and then you also had a Kerr equalizer against Chicago here, July 16th, the 90th minute. So that's five different games, Matt. They've had goals after the 80th to pull out a win or a tie at your sack field this season. So it may be 3 1, but there is belief in the Sky Blue team. One of the best things they can do. And here is Kerr 
not far off the mark from the top of the D. Well, as we get all of those late goals, I mean, we've talked about how Sky Blue put themselves in a deep hole all the time, and just the emotion fatigue must be phenomenal for these players. And it's great if you're able to use the adrenaline from getting the late goal for the win, but if you're on the, the wrong end of that, then you don't get the benefit of the adrenaline offside against Kerr. If anything, just a goal has to make Sky Blue feel better. They had given up 12 unanswered goals, which is unbelievable at the professional level. Losing 4-1 to Washington, 5-0 to Orlando, and then falling behind 3-0 in this game. Now get allowed 40 goals on the season when you include the three goals tonight. Tiernan. Here's Nairn. Fish lock out for Yanez. Good angle and use of the body from Mills there to step in front of Yanez. Now it's Corbeau's. Killian out for Kerr. Much better from Sky Blue. Kerr has Corbeau's. Tiernan central. Lytle arriving from this left side and the pass is just too far in front of Sam Kerr. The body language of Sky from Sky Blue. Haley Kottmeyer takes the goal kick. Tommy Richardson did pretty well initially, but Katie Johnson stays with it. Naho, central run. Skrowski steps in front to win it for Sky Blue. Here's Tiernan, giving everything she has to try to get there ahead of Stott. Kottmeyer taking a lot of time before releasing. Now it's Yanez, chesty down in front of Kayla Mills. Here's Nairn. To the right, made a better decision to send it long, and Yanez with a beautiful chest control. Oh, the ball forwards there was not a good one, and Sheridan collects it for Sky Blue. Here comes Mandy Freeman. Had eyes for Corbeau's, headed out by Carson Pickett. Johnson running the channel. Tommy Richardson concedes a throw in. Announced yesterday she'll be out the rest of the season after starting 16 times this year and playing every minute last year. She said, I've always had a good awareness of my body and the ability to recover. Christy Pierce talking yesterday. She said she started the season off strong, but feels recently she's been fighting through injuries and she's not able to give the team what she considers to be her 100%. She says it's the right decision for her and the team because she can't leave it on. So Kelly O'Hara is also injured coming back from a right adductor strain. She is on the bench tonight, but possibly a major injury. So probably the right decision for the longevity of her career. So certainly some fans would maybe question dead standards and what this team needs. Then she's not doing the team any favors either. So again, respect her decision and hopefully that she's able to recover from those ailments and be able to get back on the pitch and as quickly as possible. Spinning away is Stanton. Back from Andy Freeman. Skrosky. Stanton wide open in the middle of the park, questioning why the pass wasn't made to her. Richardson forward. Stott's clearance comes off Killian, and McNabb takes no chances, conceding a throw in. More urgency here from Sky Blue in the second half. They have a goal back from Sam Kerr, her 12th of the season. Now Corbeau's all sorts of space on the right. Pickett slowed it, challenge, but she really gambled there and it came off well. She took the passing lane rather than pressing out. It worked out well for Pickett. 
understanding that Sky Blue are keying in on Kerr, trying to pass the ball to Kerr ad nauseum. There has to be other players that can step up and put the ball in the back of the net for Sky Blue. Corbeau's great vision, picks out Kerr, just wide at the near post. But certainly in the first 45 minutes, she was all over the midfield area. Had that beautiful service on Nayo's goal just before halftime and was a real influence for Seattle Reign as the first half was played. Taylor Lytle, good step from Fishlock in front of Kerr. Stance in wide. Mills crossing, half clearance from McNabb. Good first touch from Killian to settle it in traffic. Now it's Skrosky. Central space for Corbeau's. Stun out to defend. Good give and go there. Corbeau's with Kerbic. Corbeau's just could not get to it. Now Seattle can break the other way. The substitute Elston, her first touch is good tracking from Stanton. And it's worth monitoring the minutes, Matt Stubbington, for Seattle. They played Wednesday at Chicago, an emotional 2-1 comeback win. But I think Nairn, who you mentioned, had a great first half. She played 76 minutes Wednesday at Chicago. She goes just over an hour here. Other players to monitor include Naho. She's played 90 minutes the last four games. She's still on the field. Good run here from Johnson. Gets around Domi Richardson now against Freeman. Johnson cutting to her right. Good strength, top of the box. She goes down, and referee Christopher Spivey waves it off. Right decision, I think, from the official. Looking at Naho getting up the pitch. I don't think there's anything wrong with her fatigue. Did her very best to get up in support of Johnson. Johnson just couldn't find the angle to pass it to her teammate. And just went under down under the challenge. Fishlock also played 90 minutes on Wednesday. Yanez didn't play at all, so she's fresh as Kerr spins out of traffic. Look at this from Kerr. Wide right, Corbeau's. Picks her head up, crossing towards the back post. Headed out by Matthias. Settling was Lytle. Had Kerr alone in the middle, but a good step to clear from Rumi Utsugi. Just watching the back line of Seattle Reign, they are so cognizant of the danger of Sam Kerr that they drop together and try and keep her in front of them whenever the ball is played in and around the box. Makes it so difficult for Sam Kerr to get any space to exploit and also very difficult for her teammates to find her in the box with those cr crossing passes. We saw the shot disparity, 12 now for Sky Blue, four for Seattle, but all four of Seattle's shots have been on goal, including their three goals as Elston crosses. Corbeau's runs it down on the far side. A very open field to this game in the second half as Sky Blue's pulled a goal back and looks for more at home. Rumi Utsugi with Elston. Rebecca Stott. She's played every game this season for Laura Harvey. Naho first time. Matthias up the line. Wonderful stuff here from Seattle. Naho, a run for the substitute Elston. A challenge there at the end line between Domi Richardson and El. Cleared by Skrosky, Lytle, a central clearance, poor decision there. Sky Blue eventually clears. Lytle very fortunate on that clearance. Corbeau's over the top, here's Sam Kerr inside picket, retreating his Kottmeyer. Kerr one versus two, Sam Kerr has two! She had a hat trick from the 78th to the 90th minute against Kansas City at your sack field July 9th. That was up a player though after a red card to Kansas City. 
And now Kerr, first in the 48th, and now around the 68th, two goals 20 minutes apart. She had six goals in July. These are her first goals of August. But she passes Rapino, who's out. The meniscus injury. Such a good goal scoring race in the Golden Boot. Marta with 11, Rapino with 12, and now Sam Kerr with 13. Addison Tiernan wide for Lytle. And Matthias is fouled. Also scored in that 5 4 win against Sky Blue July 23rd. Dahlstream, 61st career game tonight in her fifth season with Seattle. And Laura Harvey was very complimentary of her performance Wednesday at Chicago as she started. Such a different feel as it looked over at halftime in some ways. The way Seattle scored the third goal, Naho, but Sky Blue give them a ton of credit. A change in the head coach midweek with Christy Holly resigning on Wednesday. The assistant coaches have rallied under David Hodgson. A big crowd at your sack field tonight and two goals through Sam Kerr. And as you mentioned, it's what Laura Harvey warned her team against to the counter-attacking ability of Sky Blue with Kerr. Sometimes one against four as we see right here. Kerr running at the back line on a hat trick. Kerr bends it. She has a hat trick. And Sam Kerr burnishing her credentials for the 2017 FIFA Women's World Player of the Year. She was named to the 10 player shortlist this week. Stunning. And now Naho trying on the end of it. A late touch from Skrowski as Sheridan came out. And if you like sequels, this is the season C minutes have in store. Here's a shot through a crowd and a vital block at the last seconds. That corners have given Sky Blue trouble tonight. Good service, back post headed on. Good cover from Kaitlyn Sheridan. Well done by the goalkeeper to cover that one up. Take control of things in her box. So from 12 unanswered goals scored against, three goals to the good for Sky Blue as they've overturned this 3-0 deficit. Stunning. Without Roquel Rodriguez, who left the hamstring injury in the eighth minute. No Kelly O'Hara, no Christy Pierce, who now she's out for the rest of the season due to injuries. And we've seen Maya Hayes come on as a substitute after that third goal. Five minutes, the body language was so negative. No imagination going forwards. But the second half so far, it's like, a, again, it's a completely different team. I thought the third part of a series was supposed to be a, a downer. They're certainly not living up to this. Yeah, some people like the later series, like the Rocky movies. Mm -hmm. Not too far from here, based in Philadelphia. Some people like the original. Godfather had some longevity to it. But this is act three. The first stack was the prelude, 1-1 on opening night in Seattle, over in the 48th, 68th, and 71st minutes. Laura Harvey, the head coach for Seattle, must be pulling her hair out, wondering what she's got to do. It's more of the same, three nothing up at halftime, looking oh so comfortable. Well, it's interesting. She has one sub left. She could go to someone like Lauren Barnes as maybe a, a fifth defender, a third center back, as Hayes pushes it wide. Cross from Mills, headed out by McNabb. The available substitutes for Harvey Barnes, Rachel Corsi, Ellie Reed, Larissa Crummer, Melly Schiffel, the backup goalkeeper. Corbeau's delivers. A lot of backspin, punched out by Kottmeyer. Lytle. Sizing it up, top of the box, Lytle, horse shot blocked by Stott. Appeals for a handball from Sky Blue, waved off by the referee Christopher Spivey. Scold the season until May 13th. 
a road win at Houston. She had the last one in that win, 87th minute. Here's Lytle, has Kerr Central. And cleared by Matthias. So including tonight, 14 goals in just over three months from May 13th to August the 19th, 14 goals for the Making it difficult for her teammates to find her inside the box. But somehow, some way, she gets herself open in and around the 18, is able to run onto the long, gives her a little bit of time and space and the imagination to chip the goalkeeper, bend the ball around the goalkeeper for her third goal. We mentioned the 14 goals for club. How about for country? She led the Tournament of Nations four goals as Australia swept its way to the Tournament of Nations win. She had a hat trick against Brazil, against many of her NWSL contemporaries. That's 18 goals for club and country in about a three month span. Replacing Tan and she gives a little bit more dimension to the, Seattle, the Sky Blue team going forwards, a little bit more speed, athleticism up top to support Kerr. And now among the other accomplishments Kerr can think about is the single season goal scoring record, which was set by Seattle's Kim Little, 16 goals in 2014. Excellent for Mills here. She tries her luck from about 20 yards out. The rookie. Yeah, they all count. Now a chance for Hayes to give Sky Blue the lead. She cannot keep it down. One of her first two now hat tricks. For Kerr, first NWSL player to ever score two in the same season. Only two others have two hat tricks to their name, period. Nadia Nadim, one of those two hat tricks against Sky Blue in the wild 5-4 win. That game had seven goals. Does this game have a seventh? Or that game had nine goals. Does this one have a seventh tonight? It's normally me that struggles with the math. The <laughs> career NWSL goals with their three tonight. Great pass, here's a chance. Blocked, empty net, and it's put home. Off the... Finished. What a time for her very first NWSL goal. It's her 61st career game. Her fifth year in Seattle, and she's never scored a regular season goal. But she gets one off the bench tonight, and Laura Harvey substitutes continue to produce on the road. Lauren Barnes coming off of the bench. Harvey has moved Fishlock up top. And you see that Fishlock is exhausted. It's been all over the pitch tonight for Seattle. Just the sixth appearance of the season for Dahlstream. Sky Blue under acting head coach David Hodgson is going to bring on Boston College all-time leading goal scorer for an outside back. So all aggression from Sky Blue as they try to find an equalizer. Well, you have to make those tactical changes and find a way to get that tying goal. It's almost a, another window into their season coming all the way back from three nothing down and then losing the tying goal here's kerr at the end line her shot her cross was blocked Ford yet lytle crossing it's headed over the bar by sam kerr Good win from Barnes and a nice ace up the sleeve. The reigning NWSL Defender of the Year, Barnes, coming off the bench to help see out this game as she came on at 3-3. But what footwork that was from Naho to escape her defender.
four different goal scorers tonight for Seattle. Johnson in the third minute, Fishlock in the 18th. Kawasumi first half stoppage time and then Dahlstream her first career goal. I sold her short, it's her 67th career game. As she gets to her first goal, 12th appearance this season. Barnes has missed four games in five seasons in the NWSL. Tonight would have been a fifth, but she comes off the bench to help see out a 3-3 draw, and now it's 4-3 Seattle after the first career NWSL goal from Kirsten Dahlstrom. When I spoke with Laura Harvey this week, she said the 5-4 game was really the story of our season. It showed we could score from a variety of ways, but it also shows we allowed the other team to score. And she said, I want to get back to winning games 1-0. I'm sure she can wait another week for that. She would take this 4-3 win immediately. A win is a win is a win, but a 3-0 win, 1-0 win would be a lot more comfortable than what she's faced tonight. Again, she must have been feeling, and her team must have been feeling great at halftime. Lytle. Four in the box. Now it's crossed. Still alive for Kerr. She pulls it back. Another cross in the middle. Maya Hayes has scored! Well, we went through it earlier, Matt. That's the sixth time this year that Sky Blue has got a goal after the 80th minute that could lead to a win or a draw. We'll see if we have a ninth goal in this one, but just stunning the space for the attacking players on both ends. That's incredible in the fact that they're able to exploit that space as well. And Fishlock wide here, Naho has space, has Utsugi, it's Naho! And she's over the bar. Unbelievable. Should have been a fifth there. Nahu had Yutagi wide open to her left. Chose to go with the long distance effort. High over the crossbar. Killian over the top. Me and lets it go. Corbeau settling. Corbeau's shot was blocked. Still alive. Top of the box. Me and didn't hit a hand. Penalty for Sky Blue. And a late Sky Blue win. It's off the crossbar. She rattles the cage, smashing it down the middle. Still alive though for Sky Blue. Miss clearance, pushed aside by Kottmeyer, and now a corner kick for Sky Blue. Reflected effort there, saved by Kottmeyer. There's the corner. It's in! Maybe Maya Hayes!